So what I've found is that uh, this multivitamin is actually um, probably one of the most robust multivitamins that av that's available to us. And I found it to be extremely useful for uh, patients with autism, um, spectrum illness, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. Um, these individuals do um, respond very quickly and they do experience significant benefits. So in my patients who are on the um, autism spectrum or who have a psychosis diagnosis, um, after consistently taking daily essential nutrients, um, they have noticed an improvement in their thought disorder. So um, being able to think more clearly, uh, sleep and appetite also seems to stabilize. Um, anxiety goes down, mood becomes more calmer and even, um, and they become less disorganized. And in my patients that have a diagnosis of depression um, or anxiety, and when they take these uh, daily essential nutrients on a regular basis, once again, we notice an improvement in uh, uh, mood symptoms, uh, improvement in negative thoughts, um, and improvement in actually being able to let go of stress as well. I have many patients that use daily essential nutrients either for a temporary transition period or for long term and I have a handful that have been on them for long term that were able to get off of their ADD medications and off of their bipolar medications and still have really good attention and focus and still have no mood swings that are too far up or too far down so they stay within normal range when they're on this for bipolar and it's very successful. I have a patient I saw today who's been on daily essential nutrients for about seven years. When he came to me, he was had a video game addiction and he was taking high dose uh, amphetamines for stimulants for um, attentional and focus issues. And then he was having anxiety because of the stimulant use. And he was also not able to focus. Uh, even though he was taking a stimulant for focus. And so he had what I consider anxious ADD. Really, truly, from before he started the medicine, he had this disease state, but we put him on the amino acids to move off of the, um, we put him on the amino acids to move him off of the stimulant, and then we put him, I put him on the daily essential nutrients for ongoing and he has continued to thrive and he's finishing his PhD right now. I do have patients that are on pharmaceutical for mental disorders and I'll continue the pharmaceuticals if they don't have side effects and if they're working, at least to a degree. But I know that we still need to refill the depletions that may occur from either lifestyle or genetics or uh, the medicine itself. And so I replete with the daily essential nutrients and micronutrient therapy. And once we were able to regularly get these uh, nutrients into them, you see the changes. Like I said, usually within a month or so, we'll see them starting to <clears throat> make comments that things are starting to change. <clears throat> Two months later, three months later, there was more benefit. And so it was, uh, it was, a, um, it, it was really a process of getting there and again, the, the, the Hardy uh, products just made it more doable. They made it more manageable. And it made it more likely that they were, they were able to continue longer. Patients have experienced a wide variety of um, changes using daily essential nutrients. Um, I would say the biggest ones would be mental clarity and emotional stability. Um, no matter what they come in with, whether, whether it be a mild traumatic brain injury or children with ADHD, anxiety, um, a lot of times there's an instability there. Um, they feel a lot of brain fog, difficulty focusing, um, and a lot of times emotional instability as well. By giving these micronutrients, um, they're able to resupply and supplement with um, what they need for their vital functions in their body. And the biggest feedback we get is just mental clarity, calmness, um, and emotional stability. Our patients that use Hardy's daily essential nutrients really report improved mood, improved emotions, improved cognition, improved memory, and overall feeling improved energy and they feel more like themselves again. They've really benefited from taking Hardy's daily essential nutrients in multiple areas of their life. Uh, why, why do I recommend daily essential nutrients? It's, I, I, I kind of use them kind of more specifically and I probably broaden my use of them when I feel people have mood disorders or mental disabilities that may benefit from them. 
And that can be depression, uh, traumatic brain injury, a bipolar disorder, um, these, these different things that I think require a product that can, be, can maybe get in the brain a little bit better. Um, a lot of vitamin companies, they do not spend the time or money to chelate them all to the amino acids to all the vitamins. It's, it's expensive and, and that's why they, they do cost more, but there's more to them. And uh, a lot of vitamins, that's all they have is the vitamin and a really just a, a pack kind of solution, the packing material. There really isn't anything to transport the vitamin across the intestinal epithelium to get it absorbed as well as these. I recommend daily essential nutrients because I know that I'm gonna help people with their mood swings, especially with their irritability and temper, frequently with their distractibility and impulsivity. Uh, it's just a great tool to be able to offer people for help with all those problems. I've been using the, although the, you know, the uh, daily essential nutrients were, you know, developed for psychiatry, for the brain issues, but I use them much broader than that um, because they, the nutrients are good for all the tissues in the body. So I regularly use them for my cancer patients, uh, for my patients with autoimmune diseases. I found it very useful for women with osteoporosis because it has such good levels of the minerals in there. Um, so I've been using it you know, for, for a wide range of physical issues aside from the psych psychiatric ones. In general, again, the, the, the feedback from patients who are starting on it are much more common with the, uh, with the psychiatric patients because then there's very clear symptoms um, you know, someone is not going to necessarily notice the difference in their symptoms uh, when I'm treating osteoporosis because they don't feel anything. <clears throat> you know, it's going to show up on the scans, not on, on how they're feeling. But with the psychiatric stuff, then we get much more direct feedback. You know, if they're feeling less depressed, if they're feeling less anxiety, if their memory function is improving. You know, for the autistic kids, if we see that they're language is improving. If we see their interaction with other people, there, there's much more kind of concrete symptoms that you can get feedback with uh, the psychiatric side of things. Yes, my patients have definitely noticed a difference when they stop taking um, daily essential nutrients. A couple of patients that I have who, um, are, um, who have been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and in both these individuals, uh, when they somehow ended up not taking their vitamins, their daily essential nutrients for up to a month, um, I noticed that they were more disorganized and experiencing more delusions and hallucinations. And uh, patients themselves and their family members also commented about, about that. So it was a no-brainer really to go back on these vitamins in both of these uh, clinical situations. When people stop the daily essential nutrients, I don't see any withdrawal symptoms. It's not something that needs to be weaned or tapered. So when they've been on the daily, patients have been on the daily essential nutrients for a period of time, if they stop them, um, to, it depends on why they're on them. The psychiatric patients, usually after about a month or so, will start feeling <clears throat> some of the symptoms that were being controlled are starting to come back. So they will st start to feel, you know, some relapse of the symptoms. It's not immediate, it's not like after a week or so, because it probably requires levels to be dropping in their system again. And they're becoming deficient. And at that point, we see things starting to malfunction again. So if you're under a lot of stress and you're not getting the nutrition to overcome some of the losses that the stress is causing, then you're just depleting and depleting and depleting. And certain cycles like methylation cycles that require high, lots of vitamin Bs, certain things that help you make your neurotransmitters, that make you feel well, that make your melatonin so you sleep well, they're lost. And then you don't sleep well.
and then you don't feel well, and then you have heightened anxiety, or you know maybe there's also genetic inborn errors of metabolism or genetic problems that you inherited from your parents and grandparents, thanks to them. You have a predilection for having anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder, probably because of something related to um, metabolism or an inborn error of metabolism. So if we can replete those with, with good nutrition, what we put in really affects every cell in the body. What I've noticed is that when they begin to take daily essential nutrients, um, the need, the dosage for these um, pharmaceuticals definitely comes down. And uh, some of the benefits which we don't see from antipsychotics, you do begin to see that uh, with daily essential nutrients. A big thing is uh, improvement in apathy and amotivation. Uh, those are the, the two big uh, benefits I've seen in taking these uh, nutrients. When looking at any type of supplementation, um, I always want to look at the quality. And so when I started looking into micronutrients, I wanted the best quality. Hardy's micronutrients have the best research out there. Um, they've really been shown to have a big impact and they're very bioavailable. So you want the patient to be able to actually use the supplement that they're taking. Oftentimes patients can pick up a supplement from anywhere in the store and they're actually not absorbing those nutrients. Um, the research has shown that Hardy's Micronutrients is very um, bioavailable, has great bioavailability and can be absorbed for the patient. Um, and so that's the best quality that we can give to them. And I'm very familiar with the research and it's more than I've ever seen on a vitamin. I have, you know, you have to say that a lot of things that are promoted in the healthcare industry uh, just don't have the research behind it. Um, and also, you've got to be very careful because half the nutraceuticals and half the vitamins on the market either don't have what they have in there that they tout that they have, or there's toxins in there, you know, from China or whatever, lead or whatever. So, so you gotta you gotta have a product that you can trust that you know doesn't have stuff in it. Now, the Hardy background is that he started in the animal industry and he had a dramatic effect on the pork industry and you know if it worked for the animals and he made that much difference why couldn't he make a difference with humans so it told me that his product were already proven in the animal studies in the animal business uh, why wouldn't it um, transfer to this and so it's just a good good product because I trust it's made well and the research is there. If, the, if it was a crummy product, the research wouldn't show that it was beneficial. A lot of times people come to see me because they are seeking something beyond traditional psychiatry or in addition to traditional psychiatry. But a lot of times they wanna see me to get optimized, to feel cognitive enhancement or cognitive wellness, or they have a family member that has suffered from chronic mental illness or Alzheimer's disease, and they want to prevent it in themselves. And so they'll come see me for prevention and optimization. And I do the same testing as I do with someone that's chronically debilitated, but it ends up being a, a, an enhancer and an optimizer and a prevention tool. So right now, I think that we're in a new era because we have, the FDA has approved medical foods. And so there's some micronutrients that are specialized in only prescribed vitamins, which means that doctors will prescribe them, which means that doctors are opening their eyes to nutrition. It's not, a, it's not a belief any longer that nutrition might or might not be good for you. It's, it's scientific knowledge. The standard psychiatric curriculum and training is limited to treating symptoms. With the exception of looking at the root cause of, say, hypothyroidism, and maybe some other really rare, obscure things, but you know, we, we are trained to look for hypothyroidism, but we're not trained to look for any other root causes. Unfortunately, medical school doesn't train you to do other things, to, to do things other than prescribe, you know, when you, when everything looks like a nail, you use a hammer and the hammer is the medicine. We're see, seeing the transformations that people can make when we just apply nutrition and things like massage therapy or muscle manipulation and lifestyle management, people can overcome a whole host of disease states, including mental illness or mental debilitation. If someone's coming to me 
to get off of a medication. So if someone's on a mood stabilizer or an antidepressant or an antipsychotic that's being prescribed to them and it's causing them side effects and they're still having anxiety, depression, or mood disorders, why should we keep them on the medicine? If they're still having the symptoms and the medicine's causing side effects, then I wanna move them off the medicine. However, moving them off the medicine they, their brain has neuroadapted, so in order to unadapt the brain from the medicine, prevent things like discontinuation syndrome, or at least dampen down the discontinuation or withdrawal from the medicine, using free-form amino acids is wildly successful. Why do I think it's important to teach other healthcare providers about nutrition? It's because they don't get it in school. Um, I think the average, maybe it's better now, in medical school, the average time they spend on nutrition is maybe two weeks, which I think is really faulty. Um, I think there's just too much emphasis on pharmaceutical approach to somebody first. So it doesn't take much time to write a prescription, and, but it does take time to teach people about nutrition your patients. So why we should teach them because they really, healthcare providers aren't really taught anything in school. And so it's something you have to learn after. And that's something I'm always trying to teach myself and learn and read about how does this affect this enzyme? How does this uh, help regulate that part of the physiology? And I think it's important because many people are spending a lot of money on a lot of pharmaceuticals when a lot of it could be a nutritional deficiency um, and you know hormone deficiency that's the, those are the things i check so you're you're making people commit to a drug that has side effects and costly and may not really be beneficial for them in the end it could be a nutritional deficiency i'm not against medication so i try the nutritional first and if we need medications we need medication but it's just such an essential part of cell physiology. And I see with all the nutritional deficiencies on my test that it really helps everybody run. I get so many compliments from patients saying, you know, you, you changed my life. My energy is back. You know, I feel so much better. And I think part of the vitamins management is causing that to be a positive effect for them. Looking back, I was confronted with the really significant limitations of the standard therapy that's available for psychiatric disorders. And what I've discovered in what's turned out to be a very much longer quest than I ever thought I was setting out on is that there are a whole variety of root causes behind mental health symptoms that are really underappreciated and undertreated. And Nutritional status is one of those.